Welcome to 360 Sports, everyone. I'm Alex Delaverson, and with me is James No Doubt Dotson. We are going to be talking about Pitt and Penn State bowl games. Uh, Dotson, what's up? Not too much, man. I'm a little disappointed with the BCS results, but nothing you can do about that. So just got to get ready for the bowl games that we have. We got a couple of good ones here for the Keystone State. Oh, uh, we definitely do. Uh, the one game I'm most excited about is the Penn State Houston matchup. Um, we've got a great offense in Houston, led by uh, Case Keenum and uh, Matt McGloin, who says I could throw five interceptions, the same amount you've thrown all year, in one bowl game. Um, so, what do you have to say about this matchup, Dawson? I'll start out with that a lot of Penn State fans, uh, rightfully so, are a little disappointed with the way this whole bowl selection process happened. They felt that they were uh, overlooked by bowls such as the uh, Capital One Bowl and the uh, Gator Bowl, um, taking teams like a 6-6 six and six Ohio State or a 9-3 and three Nebraska over a 9-3 Penn State who's ranked higher. But um, it ended up being that they got a better matchup than anybody could have anticipated playing the one-loss Houston team with Case Keenum. And we all know what Keenum has done down there in Houston. He's been an absolute dominant force all year, setting records left and right, um, but he's yet to face a defense the caliber of Penn State. And uh, so that's going to make this a very interesting game, a high-octane, spread-it-out, throw-the-ball-deep offense against a top Big Ten defense in Penn State that's going to be the main matchup. But then look the other way around. Can McGloin and Silas Red and the Wildcat uh, be effective as an offense against uh, the Houston Cougars? It's going to be a fun game for uh, for a powerhouse conference versus a uh, mid-major conference. I'm I'm excited for it. I know I am too. And you know, like you're saying, it's offense versus a, a BCS school's defense. Um, like I was saying earlier, the difference is going to be the quarterback play. I mean, Case Keenum had five interceptions all year, and last year McGloin threw five interceptions in one bowl game. So it's going to be depends which McGloin shows up, one that can lead a t- manage a team, I should say, or one that can self-destruct. And, you know, and, and I think Case Keenum will be able to uh, play at a high level against this uh, Penn State defense. It is a very good defense. Um, you know, yeah, of course, they haven't really been tested or anything, but for someone to play at the level um, Keenum is playing at, no matter what defense he's up against, he's still going to be a uh, a good quarterback, and I don't think Penn State has the offense to keep up with Houston, honestly. Um, no, so, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, for sure. I mean, no matter what kind of wildcat package they put in. Uh, so I'm going to go with Houston in this matchup. Uh, I think Houston's offense will be the uh, Case Keenum will be the difference in this game. Uh, I, I expect uh, to be a slow start at first, and then I expect Case Keenum's going to think to himself, hey, this isn't so bad playing against a Big Ten defense, a BCS defense, and he's going to be confident, and he's going to start throwing touchdowns left and right. So I think this is going to be a very long night for the Nittany Lions. I see Houston winning by a score of, I don't know, about 31-14. to 14. Well, that's a that's a very bold prediction there. Um, Houston is the uh, higher ranked team, and they're playing just down the road in Dallas, so that's understandable. I think the key in this game is going to be uh, the Penn State offense uh, controlling the clock, controlling the game. The best the best defense is keeping your defense off the field. So uh, I, I think you're going to see a lot of Wildcat, a lot of uh, Silas Red runs. And usually in these type of games, you see down the stretch the uh, bigger offensive and defensive lines of the power school, of the Big Ten team, um, essentially wearing down the front defensive and offensive fronts of the mid-major team. Houston does not have a very big uh, offensive or defensive line. So I think that's the key. If Penn State can control the clock early, control the, the style of game, Lots of runs wear down the uh, defensive line, and I think that they can control the game and keep Keenum off the field. And if so, I give Penn State a victory. I'm going to say, yeah, um, I'm going to say 24 to 21 is going to be the final score. And I mean, I just look at history. This could be reminiscent of uh, of the game back in 19, uh, 1985 against uh, Miami, where the uh, Penn State team had to play against Heisman Trophy winner uh, Vinny Testaverde and that great Miami offense. And 
everybody said there was no way that they were going to shut him down while they held him to 10 points. So you, Penn State knows how to control this type of game. They know how to shut down a high-powered offense. It's just a matter of being able to score enough points that they can still maintain on top of them. Well, I mean, that's why I think they're going to lose. If Penn State gets behind one touchdown, two touchdowns, they're not coming back. I, I just feel like Penn State's offense is going to stall, like almost right from the start. I mean, if Penn State had a, a little bit better offense, uh, I'd feel more confident. I just feel like this is going to be like a snowball effect. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, you're know, maybe you're it's... exactly you're exactly right. It's all it's all about how this game begins. If it begins with Penn State controlling the ball with the run, great. If they go three and out and then Houston goes down and scores immediately, it could be you're right. It could be a very long day down in Dallas. My key to my key to victory for Penn State is definitely time of possession. They got to keep mm-hmm. the ball. They got to uh, take time off the clock. Um, what's your single most uh, key to winning this game if you're a Penn Stater? Oh, you hit it. It's it's time of possession. It's controlling the clock. It's keeping Keenum off the field and getting quality possessions on offense. Lots of lots of runs. Lots of uh, Silas Red, and hopefully just you know uh, matriculate the ball down the field and getting points on the board. Uh, you can't have possessions where they get down into enemy territory and not score. So it's controlling the line and then getting points on the board because points will be at a premium to be able to keep up with a Houston offense. No doubt about it. All right. Well, you heard it here. Um, Penn State prediction from um, the 360 Sports Network college experts here. Yeah, uh, we're we're split though. We're split. You don't think they'll get it, and I think they will. So it 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 just proves right there though. We're gonna have a good game. So that'll be good. Um, why don't we switch over though to uh, to our Pitt Panthers? Uh, finish off the season uh, six and six record. They are going to be taking on Southern Methodist in the Compass Bowl. Uh, Southern Methodist Mustangs seven and five out of Conference USA. So another Conference USA opponent. How do you break down this game, Alex? Uh, okay. Well, before we get down to you know how to win the game, if you're a the Panther or uh, if you're a Mustang, I I believe Pitt should have denied this bowl game, and here's why. Yes, I know there's 15 practices. Um, if you go to a bowl game, and that is valuable, and I know it's a reward for the seniors to go um, to a bowl game. But let's be real here. In my eyes, this is not a reward. Six and six teams should not be uh, rewarded. And, you know, I even had um, Chris Peak from Rivals.com say, well, it's not Pitt's fault the bowl system's bloated like this. Why don't you start campaigning against the bowl system? The thing is, though, if it was any other bowl but the Compass Bowl, I wouldn't feel this way, and here's why. This is the one bowl game they didn't want to go to. Last year, Pitt went to the Compass Bowl. And that was with the whole Mike Haywood fiasco, uh, you know, the resignation of Dave Wanstead, bringing a tall grab. To me, this is just bringing back attention to what happened last year. It's not an uncommon thing for teams to uh, turn down bowl games. Uh, more teams don't do it. Uh, but, I mean, just something like this, something where you don't want to relive this, you know what I mean, the Compass Bowl all over again. I, I would not have been opposed to them saying no you know they tried to steve peterson tried to get into another bowl they wanted to go to the beefo brady's bowl even the liberty bowl but the big east was not doing Pitt any favors because they did bolt with syracuse to leave and they told them they're going back to the compass bowl so uh here they are again you have been already on all the main pittsburgh websites what are we talking about the dave wanstead uh, dave wanstead was on the radio again uh, or for the first time since the Todd Graham hiring. And why? Because of the Compass Bowl situation. They wanted to get his input. You know, it's kind of the anniversary, one year, almost the anniversary, what happened. This whole circus is happening. And that's what I was trying to tell Chris Peak of Rivals, is something is just not uh, worth the headache. So here we yeah. are again, watch the criticizing oh. Graham. It's it just, to me, it was a circus. Just deny it. Just, yeah. just get, get over it. You know what I mean? Uh, it's also not helpful, too, when just the scheduling of it, the Compass Bowl is on January 7th, um, two days before the national championship, and then but after all the other BCS Bowl games. It's just it's in the middle of nowhere. It's wide open that everybody knows exactly what's going on. It just creates more story in that regard, too, for, for a 6-6 six and 7-5 six and and team. It's not... Um. I think Pitt will win, not because they're so head and above 
you know, head and shoulders above SMU. And believe me, we all know they're not. They struggle with Buffalo and uh, Maine. But I think they are the better team here. It's a battle of two six and six teams. Um, they don't have Ray Graham. I still think they're going to win. What's going to come down to is which, unfortunately, Tino Sinceri comes to play, the disgustingly awful one or the awful one. Uh, so if he can not be as awful, I think they'll win. But if it's the Tino Sinceri we saw from West Virginia, who took nine sacks in the final 25 possessions or four out of the last seven possessions, whatever you want to – uh, see, if that guy comes to play, I don't see this team winning. Uh, best thing about Pitt, though, in this game is they have one of the best secondaries in the league, uh, so they should be able to shut down the, the defense should be able to shut down the Mustangs' offense. But if the offense can't get rolling, if they start putting up 47 yards in one half again like they did against West Virginia, uh, even with their defense, they can only do so much. So if the defense plays like always, they win, and if Tino Sinceri is less awful than usual, they should win just fine. Yeah, I think that it, the Pitt's woes have all been placed on Tino Sinceri's shoulders. They do well or they struggle based on how he performs. And when Pitt sets up the short passing game for him, um, or those like uh, you saw against Syracuse, the roll out and throw back to a wide open receiver. The, I mean, those are the type of plays you need to do. You can't have him dropping back and throwing. He's not going to do well. And I think that having these 15 extra practices um, is going to help in getting this offense even better, not only for the bowl game, but for next year as well. And just to look at uh, the Mustang schedule here, uh, their, three, their games against the top three teams in their conference, Southern Miss, Tulsa, and Houston, uh, they scored a combined 17 points in that in those three games. Um, so there, it's not a matter of um, scoring a bunch of points to stay ahead of this team. It's going to be about controlling the game, uh, getting some points early, and forcing some turnovers on defense. And I think, especially with the play of uh, of Lindsay, the linebacker from Pitt, I think that uh, there's going to be absolutely no question that Pitt's defense is going to be the storyline in this game, and you're going to see a lot of big plays out of them and uh, probably even a big special teams play. Todd Graham loves his defense and special teams. So um, I'm going to say Pitt wins. I'm going to give him by two touchdowns. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say 31 to 17. Well, I think yeah, I think uh, they'll win by at least 10 points or something like that. I I think it'll probably be something like maybe 21 uh, 10 or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't think they're going to score 30 some points. I just for whatever reason I know you're like the idea of Tino Sinceri getting 15 extra practices with the team, but is that really going to make the team better? I mean, there's already rumors that he's not even going to be back here next year. Uh, you know, he might be going to Division One school or one away school, or whatever. But that's another story. So I don't, I, I just don't feel like these 15 extra practices are going to make is going to make Pitt that much better for this bowl or for next season. But I mean, it still helps. But I don't know. Maybe that's and, just me. And any practice is good and. Yeah, that that's the thing is that it is beyond a reward for the team. It's also a reward for the coaches who got you there, and it's also to start building for next year. This is a fun time for them, but you still want to win, and we still want to improve because, you know what, a lot of you are coming back next year, and we want to go somewhere else in the Compass Bowl, obviously. So let's start working and get towards that. All right, well... Obviously, I disagree with you on some things, but that's the beauty of uh, the debating sports. But um, all right, that basically wraps up uh, the two Division One Keystone State teams here with Pitt and Penn State. Um, so each game will be interesting in their own way. Hopefully, so I think we both believe that the Penn State Houston game is going to be by far the more entertaining game, and uh, the Pitt game will probably be more the interesting game if that kind of makes sense. Kind of want to see what happens there. Um, God forbid if Pitt loses that game and goes six and seven. Oh God, what a disaster that would be. Um, but anyway, that wraps up this edition of 360 Sports Network. Uh, enjoy the bowl games, everyone. Stay safe and check back to 360SportsNetwork.com and reach us on Twitter at 3S and at work. Um, have a good night, everyone. Wow. Wow, wow.